начало. Ха. Поехали. Куда? В Днепро. В Днепро? Да. Я что-то туда не хочу больше езжать. Почему? Ну, сам езжай. Я лучше в Киеве останусь, либо в Одессу поеду. Назад. Хорошо. Да. В Днепре очень плохо. Почему плохо? Нет, ну не очень плохо, я наврала. Ну, типа, там ресторанчики, кафешки, коктейльные бары, конечно, супер, но все остальное, воздух и архитектура, и развлечения, не очень весело. Окей, okay. я да. поеду сам. Езжай. Okay, па -па. Па. Сар -экспириенс. Shabbat Shalom from Dnipro. So that, as you can see, is the menorah center here in Dnipro. And that is the biggest Jewish cultural building in the world. Now you might ask yourself, why would it be in Dnipro? Why is it not in New York or Buenos Aires or Israel itself? Well, it's here because they have a significant Jewish population and they built this center uh, to promote the culture, I guess, or to give them a place. Obviously, in history, Ukraine had a lot of Jews, especially before the Second World War. It's obviously a very tragic history, what happened in this region with the Holocaust. And in some of the cities in Ukraine, it would have been like, you know, 30 to 40 percent of the population pre-war, same in Belarus, uh, would have been Jewish. And today, that's obviously dramatically less. But here in Dnipro, it is the most Jewish city per capita in the country. It's about seven, seven, eight percent of the population is Jewish here. So it's about 70 to 80,000 Jews live here. Uh, so that's very significant in terms of not just the number of Jews, but also their political influence. A lot of the politicians from Dnipro are Jewish as well. So you have a little bit of a Jewish cultural thing going on. Something a little bit different than you're gonna see obviously in Kiev, Odessa, uh, which most people think is the most Jewish city, but in fact, it's not. It's actually here in Dnipro. It's, uh, maybe about half that in Odessa today in reality. So obviously and there's some Jewish restaurants around or uh, where you can get your forschmack uh, or your shachuka, which I love in the morning and good hummus. I'm a big fan of that as well. So something a little bit different here in Dnipro nowadays that you're not going to see in other Ukrainian cities. So Dnipro is named after the river Dnipro. It's the biggest river in Ukraine. It dissects the country. The city was formerly known as Dnipropetrovsk and it took me a long, long time to be able to say Dnipropetrovsk. I don't know why it took me so long. And then when I finally learned how to say it, they simplified the name and changed it to Dnipro. So you have that easy task of just remember it's called Dnipro, but uh, the oblast is still called Dnipropetrovsk and you will see the name Dnipropetrovsk a little bit across the city. There's a Hotel Dnipropetrovsk there that I just saw on the waterfront. The city has a population of about a million people. So it's not small, it's not Kiev, it's not massive, but it's a good sized city. So I'm super pumped to get out and explore it on this absolutely fantastic late March afternoon. один раз мне сказала в Динипро. Да. Какая разница, ты, ты думаешь? Ну, в Харькове больше достопримечательностей. Это однозначно. Ну, как бы... Что-нибудь интересное смотрела в Динипро? Нет. Нет. Ничего интересного не увидела. Хорошо. Ничего плохого не хочу сказать, но это личный опыт. So this monstrosity behind me is the Paris Hotel and it's basically today a testament to the decay of Dnipro after the fall of the Soviet Union. This hotel was built in Soviet times but was never actually opened up to the public and um, some Ukrainians have now put some Dnipro and probably put a Ukrainian trident and give it a little bit of color 
uh, to make it a little bit nicer and less of an eyesore. But this is pretty common because the population of Dnipro uh, in the 90s, 2000s has fallen from about 1.3 million to less than a million. Uh, it's now around 1 million inhabitants. And as a result, there's just lots of abandoned buildings here. And that contrasts a lot with the city center, which is being rejuvenated, has a lot of modern buildings, actually some of the most modern I've seen in Ukraine, definitely outside of Kiev. Uh, but then you have this, which has kind of, I guess, become uh, a little bit of a monument to the fall of the Soviet Union. And it reminds me a lot of in Kaliningrad in Russia, that Russian exclave between Lithuania and Poland. There you have a building in the center that was also never opened, built in sovereign times, and the locals refer to it as the monster. So I guess this is the Dnipro monster. big question is after my time here in Dnipro do I love Dnipro or not and whether you should consider coming here if you are planning a trip to Eastern Europe or maybe even moving to Ukraine itself for a longer period say three months uh, or plus so I had a great time here the city definitely has its own particular charm and style and there were a lot of places to go out in the city center it was quite compact so definitely cool for me but I think it's definitely not the city for a newbie to traveling in Eastern Europe uh, and particularly if you haven't traveled around Ukraine definitely not for a first trip and the city feels a bit more old school old school, old school post-Soviet space so like you know early 2000s feel to it like you would have seen say in Odessa or in Kiev at that stage. So what I mean by that, it's definitely got a little bit more of a rougher feel to it as a city. If you've watched Fallen Bankrupt's Ben's videos, you know, with the Gopniks, you'll probably understand the style. And it's also a theme on the internet. Uh, Gopniks is the word for a guy who's a little bit of a petty criminal or chancer, I think we would use in Ireland <laughs> for that. So just bear in mind that if you are, haven't got, you're not streetwise and traveling in Eastern Europe, this is probably, this is definitely not the city to start in. Uh, and also English is, is going to be less spoken in the other cities. So if you don't speak Russian, it's probably not the city for you. Like I would take clients here who have traveled a good bit around UK, and already been to say Kiev and Odessa, Kharkiv, and then come to Dnipro for that kind of more old school experience. Ставьте лайки, подписывайтесь на канал и приезжайте к нам в Украину. Sar Experience.